Now let's talk about different operations we can perform on vectors. We'll start with a fairly intuitive vector operation, and that's scalar multiplication. To perform scalar multiplication, we simply multiply each component of the vector by the same coefficient. Visually, this results in the magnitude of the vector changing. The direction is going to remain the same. Scalar division will also work in the same way. So to use an example, we could start with the vector 1, 3, and draw that out on our graph here. So over 1 and up 3. There it is. There's vector A. And we could take 2 times vector A by simply multiplying each component of the vector by the coefficient 2. And we're going to see here that by drawing this new vector on our graph, we're going to see that the direction remains identical. However, the vector is now twice as long, or its magnitude has increased by a factor of 2. It's interesting to note that negating a vector, that is multiplying it by negative 1, reverses its direction. Vectors of the same dimension can be added together by adding each of their component pairs together, respectively. So here we have vectors a and b added together. So we'll take the x components, 1 plus 2 being 3, and the y components, 2 plus 2 being 4. And then we'll plot that out on our graph. So here's vector a at a coordinate of 1, 2 and vector b at its coordinates of 2, 2. We can move vector b such that it's sitting on top of vector a, and then draw a new vector from the beginning of a to the end of b, and we'll see that the coordinates that this new vector uses, well, that's precisely what we obtained by adding the two vectors together. Vector subtraction follows a similar process. Finding a vector's magnitude is an essential calculation and is performed frequently in computer graphics. To find a vector's magnitude, we need to think of its components as the legs of a right triangle. Visually, we can see that the vector covers the length of the right triangle's hypotenuse. Therefore, we can calculate the length using the Pythagorean theorem. So we can say that the magnitude of vector a is equal to the square root of 3 squared, that's one of the legs of the right triangle, plus 4 squared, that's the other leg, and then we can just quickly solve this with 3 squared being equal to 9, 4 squared being equal to 16, 9 and 16 being equal to 25, and then we'll take the square root of 25, giving us the magnitude of vector a, which is a value of 5. And of course, we know uh, that this is true because uh, we're working with the 3, 4, 5 triangle here. And this works in 3D too. We just include the third component in the square root. Using the vector magnitude, we can take any vector and shrink it down such that its magnitude is 1. This process is called vector normalization, and the resulting vector with a magnitude of 1 is called a unit vector. Unit vectors are very desirable as they provide a value where the magnitude is unimportant, and of course can be scaled to any length, but the direction information is retained. To calculate a unit vector, we simply divide each component by the vector's magnitude. So we already have the magnitude of the vector 3, 4. We know that's 5. So we can go ahead and normalize this vector by first dividing the x component by 5, and then the y component. Solving this gives us a value of 0 0.6 for the x component, and 0 0.8 for the y. We can quickly plot this and find that the resulting unit vector is indeed pointing in the same direction as the original vector, 
However, its magnitude has been shrunk down to one.